Medtronic Technologies impacted more than 72 million people in the last year, equating to two people every second. Harnessing the power of technology to take healthcare further, each technology has unique benefits designed to serve patients. The goal of this program is to get closer to the patient and to delve into the challenges and impact each technology has in practice. This is the Medtronic MedEd Learning Experience. The BIS monitoring system should not be used as the sole basis for diagnosis or therapy and is intended only as an adjunct in patient assessment. Reliance on BIS system alone for intraoperative anesthetic management is not recommended. Medtronic's medical education programs are offered to provide attendees education on the FDA cleared indications and use of our products when applicable. The contents and conclusions of the following program are solely those of the speakers unless otherwise cited. The speakers are responsible for all content and any necessary permissions. The speakers received funding from Covidian LP, a Medtronic company, for the speaking engagement. For this segment of the series, A Discussion on Anesthesia and the Brain, we will answer the question, what is the BIS monitor value range and what range the value should be kept between? To help answer this question is Dr. Stephen Bader, Chief of Cardiothoracic Anesthesiology at Heritage Valley Health System in Beaver, Pennsylvania. So the BIS monitor presents us with a value between uh, zero and 100. And the you know, way to conceptualize that is that zero would be somebody with zero electrical brain activity. So an isoelectric EEG representing uh, essentially a completely metabolically inactive brain or brain death. Now you can achieve isoelectric EEG with incredibly deep anesthesia. We're even trying to achieve that in certain clinical situations. But generally speaking, an isoelectric EEG is a bad thing. Uh, 100 representing a uh, wide awake patient. So hopefully my BIS value right now is somewhere in the upper 90s or 100 because I'm actively using my brain, talking, thinking, walking around. Now, it, the uh, value that we generally associate with somebody under general anesthesia using a balanced anesthetic technique would be something around 50. Um, the spectrum in between 50 and 100 is really where the clinical situation and what your goal for the anesthetic you know determines where your target number is so if we're doing a, a easy procedure a light sedation procedure placing a, a vascular access or something like that that's really going to be not requiring the patient to be deeply sedated you just want a light sedation achieve mostly amnesia and have the patient be calm, but you don't need to have them have a, a complete lack of recall of the events. That would be somewhere in the 70 to 80 range for most people. In fact, uh, you can get someone who's very calm and closes their eyes with a BIS monitor on to achieve a number in the 90, mid 80s, even maybe low 80s if there's somebody who practices uh, meditation. So it's, you know, those, that range uh, in the 70 to 80 is really considered a, a light or moderate sedation. Once you get below 60, we consider that general anesthesia. And that's where most of the time in maintenance of general anesthesia, that's where we most commonly think about using the BIS monitor is to use that number as an adjunct uh, to our uh, you know, usual hemodynamic and other cues to try and assess the patient's anesthetic state. Now, if you talk about trying to achieve deeper uh, states such as uh, with a BIS below 40 or even into the 20 or 30 range, you know, you might be trying to achieve that if you're using uh, alternative anesthetic technique that's not that well balanced, you know, so in cases where we're trying to extremely limit the amount of opioid analgesics we use, uh, you might try to achieve, you know, a deeper hypnotic state uh, to, you know, compensate for that intermittent painful stimulus that we're not blunting using our typical balanced anesthetic. And then in cases where we are trying to limit brain metabolic activity, you know, uh, vascular aneurysm clipping uh, uh, in brain surgery or a circulatory arrest in heart surgery, you may try to achieve birth suppression or even close to an isoelectric EEG to try and provide brain protection uh, by reducing uh, the brain metabolic rate using your anesthetic agents. Uh, so understanding the range of... Uh, you know, BIS uh, at a zero where you're, you know, completely suppressing all brain metabolic activity all the way up to 100 where you're wide awake. Why do we um, pick 50 in the middle as a general anesthesia goal? Well, that, that guarantees that the patient is not going to have uh, much risk of awareness and in fact, an infinitesimally small risk of awareness and memory of events. And uh, without going too low, where if we're below 40, you know, you start having more problems with hypotension, 
uh, and uh, all the other uh, complications of overdoing it with the anesthesia, right? So getting it just right, where you have the patient adequately maintaining general anesthesia, they're not moving during the procedure, they don't have any memory of it, you know, so they're certainly below 60, but they also uh, are not having the complications of overdoing the anesthesia, having prolonged PACU stays, uh, because they, you know, got a little too much of uh, opioid analgesic or hypnotic uh, medicines, so they end up staying in the recovery room longer, having more post-op delirium, having more hypotension during the case, which can result in organ dysfunction afterwards, you know, you increase your risk of having acute kidney injury, you know, prolonged post-operative delirium from prolonged hypotension during the case, all those things can uh, be improved by not getting the bis too low and not having the patient too deeply anesthetized. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that most of us just look at the number and have a clinical uh, idea of what's going on from our assessment of the what's going on during the procedure, uh, changes in, you know, surgical level of stimulus, uh, and, every, uh, you know, the overall picture of where we are in the case in the beginning, the middle, or the end. You know, so sometimes uh, I think we do also get a little too attached to the number. Uh, so, you know, it also is helpful to actually look at the raw EEG waveform a little bit. And I think that uh, most of us, uh, you know, clinical users of the BIS are not experts on the EEG, but it can be helpful to have a little idea of what those numbers um, may look like on the raw EEG that is displayed on most BIS monitor, you know, uh, depending on how you set it up, you're going to be able to look at that raw EEG. So in an awake 100 person, you're going to see uh, very low amplitude, high frequency, you know, essentially very fine uh, waves, as you can see there in the diagram. And as you start sedating the patient, you get into the 70s and 80s, you're going to see higher amplitudes and some slowing. And I think most people, you know, as you get to general anesthesia, can recognize the delta wave pattern with these slow humps uh, in, in the uh, in the waveform. Now, once you get, you know, low and slow, when you're getting really deep uh, anesthesia, you'll start seeing, you know, larger amplitudes and very slow frequency waves. And then isoelectric, as we discussed, is really representative of, you know, essentially no brain activity, almost a flat line. Please tune in next week for a new segment from this series wherever you find your podcast. This is the Medtronic MedEd Learning Experience. Thank you for listening.